guys, my name is Matt. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, this video is going to be a quick one on the Cafe Racer build. Got plenty of pictures, not a lot of videos, got some first start videos and whatnot. Anyway, enjoy the video if you like it, leave a like down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and drop a comment down below, let me know what you're building in your shed. Enjoy. Alright, let's get straight into it. So the first picture here is when I uh, saw the bike for the first time at the uh, seller's place. Uh, bought it for $1,500, not running, and yeah, it came with a second engine. Um, second picture here, you can see I just dodged up the ignition switch as soon as I got it home, and just I really wanted to get this thing running. I was so excited. Um, yeah, and you'll see what happens here in a sec. There's no carbs on it. Just threw some starting fluid down the guts. And that was the best, really. And starter motor sounds terrible. So this is it idling. I noticed uh, almost immediately it would get very, very hot and then uh, eventually it would get sort of this deep knock, which I later found out that the, the big end was stuffed. So I ripped out the engine and began tearing it down and having a look at it and also preparing the second yep. engine. That, ladies and gents, is the bottom end. So yeah, I began, I began working on this engine here. This is the second engine it actually came with. Um, it's actually the better of the two anyway, obviously. But this one is actually a newer one. It had the provision for a sliding fork. So I got to work uh, getting everything sandblasted, everything ready to go. And yeah, recondition the valves, put them all back together. Look at that. It's beautiful. Okay, so we started reassembling the engine here. Uh, I basically gave, gave the pistons a, a solid scrubbing brand new piston rings, uh, both compression rings and the oil, oil control ring as well. Brand new gasket set, just a, uh, like a cheap uh, eBay China gasket uh, set. So when I went to torque them down, took the uh, jugs and uh, heads down, but there was actually still a gap between the cylinder head and the jug, which annoyed me for a little bit, but eventually it actually settled down and it was fine. almost back together such an easy engine to work with to be honest so this is it all painted up look how good she looks slapped a set of Makuni carburetors on it how good does that look so yeah also rub the fins on the heads just to give it that nicer look and then um, it was time to slap it back in the bike and try and fire it I realized I had the coils uh, actually plugged backwards, so it was just spitting mad flames and not going anywhere really. So I finally realized I had the coils plugged in backwards, corrected that, and away she went. Quickly popped the headers on and had an go fire. How good's that, eh? So she's all back together, uh, pretty much ready for rego. So I was just trying to get everything dialed in um, before I took it for a blue slip. So this is just outside my old garage, almost, almost complete, just sort of ironing out all the crappy little things. So this is a little, uh, little photo shoot I did just out in the front yard. Just to, um, I was pretty proud of myself, you know, rebuilt this bike motor and it starting and running and, and it was running great so this is the first ride we just went up to Jerry's cafe in Kalnura 
It's a great little place. But not long after that, straight on the hoist, ripping the front end off because I had an R6 front end to go in. So I got a Cognito Moto stem, uh, slapped that, well pressed it in into the R6 triple clamps, and presto, you've got a sports bike front end, wheel, brakes, forks, everything in the front end of your 81 model XB750. Happens that. Another thing I got with it was a R6 rear shock. So in these few pictures, I'm just sort of slapping it in there and seeing it how, how she goes, where she wants to sit, where it's happy. Yeah, so I ended up building a little electrics tray just to house all the fuses and relays and whatnot with the factory harness. Uh, it was a terrible harness, but I mean, it got me by until, like, just so I can enjoy it over the summer. Um, yeah, until I could sort of just rip it down and paint it. Here we are finally on the road test, man. What a feeling. I just remember being, well, one, nervous, but two, just overwhelmed with you know, just that feeling of achievement. I built this. This is where things start to get a bit interesting. So I cut off these tabs here, uh, welded them back on in the right spot, made a big aluminium tray so I could sit the CDI box and the M unit and then just start working out where to run the harness, what I needed and you know all that good stuff. So once all the harness was run and everything like that, I, uh, I was ready to pull it all down. It was getting into the colder months, so riding it less anyway. So it's all in pieces here, and uh, my dad's uh, painter. So gave him all the all the parts, and um, yeah, I got them back very quickly. Ended up buying a Chinese mini lathe and. Um, making a few spaces and everything that I was missing. I actually had some dramas with the rear swing arm, or with the swing arm. Um, it was seized on, like I'm telling you, seized on. I had to cut it off. So therefore I had to make these aluminium spaces and ended up using a plastic as the bearing as opposed to sort of like a metal bearing. Machined up these little alloy uh, spacer caps and I think I did a pretty good job you know, considering this was probably my first time machining anything. You can see I got all the parts back. Well, they're all painted and I wasted no time getting this thing back together. I remember being so excited. It was like, it was like Christmas, you know? Um, I remember dad actually run behind you know a bit with work and whatever so he it took him a while to paint the rear swing arm and um you know that's what i was waiting for in this point in time here so never mind i actually ended up buying um, a whole bunch of uh, stainless steel tubing for the exhaust to attempt my first ever stainless steel exhaust system for a motorbike i think i did all right the looking at the worlds now sure i definitely definitely could have done better but you know, for my first time, I think I, I think I did all right. So at this point.
point I was pretty close to firing this thing up and I was getting very excited. All I had to do really was finish weld it and, and then um, kick it in the guts. So, this is what she sounded like with zero battles. So this is what it sounded like after I put a baffle into it. I've got to say, it's actually been one of the most emotional experiences that I've had. You know, like I said earlier, just sort of like building something with your own two hands and just seeing it evolve and change into something so nice and, and so uh, refined. I think, I think I did an awesome job and I don't want to toot my own horn, but you know, I think it's unreal. And I'll keep this until I take my last breath on this earth. So that was it guys, that was my cafe racer build. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, um, subscribe if you haven't already, and drop a comment down, down below like I said earlier. Let me know what you're building. Give me some ideas about some future projects. Speaking of future projects, I've got a 1971 Suzuki T250. It is a basket case. I got it literally for a case of beer. So that'll be coming up soon. Um, I'm gonna start collecting parts and, and making videos on that and pumping them out and seeing if we can get this bike um, back on the road. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.